call the meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. We'll do roll call attendance. Denise Barstow-Mans. Here. Thank you. Courtney Meyer. Here. Judy Stone. Here. And I, Diana West, am here. Currently, Sherry Parsons and Adriana Susanski are absent, but hopefully Sherry will be able to join us in a bit. Okay, first action item is to approve the minutes from April 18th, 2023. Courtney distributed those. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll do it, Sarah. So moved. <laughs> I have a second. Second. Uh, Can I any, second? Yes. Any yeah. corrections or additions need to be made? Here comes Sherry. Oh, and Dan's here. <clears throat> All right, hearing none, uh, roll call vote, Denise. Here. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Approving minutes. <laughs> I'll come back to you. Courtney. Uh, yes. Judy. Yes. Sherry, we're voting on the minutes. Do you approve them? Oh, she's connecting to audio. Um, is this being recorded? Yes. Oh, it is. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I is. see it now. Yeah. Um, I, Diana West, also vote yes. That's the majority, so motion carries. Um, other two don't vote because of technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. Um, CPA application project next. All right, so the first thing I wanna bring up is that Courtney very graciously paid for the sign designs out of her own pocket. But I don't believe we spent our FY23 budget on anything else. So I would like to put forth a mo motion to reimburse Courtney using our budgeted funds. Does anybody have any questions about that, opinions? I second it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, no other opinions, we're, we're cool. Sounds good to me. I, right, think, I think it's very nice. Is there anything else we could spend that money on or no? I mean. I mean, we got the CPA money, so. We've got a month and a half left, not even less than a month and a half left in the fiscal year. Yeah. So I just don't see us getting our act together in time to spend yep. it on anything else at this point. Okay. Um. So you had mentioned last fall when you paid that invoice that that is something you would prefer if we got to this point and we hadn't spent it on anything else. Um, <clears throat> so if everyone is okay with that, I guess we should take a vote. Denise, are you ready to vote on something else? This is the last time I'll ask you to vote tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm ready. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, so the motion on the floor is to reimburse Courtney for the expense she paid out of pocket for the sign design. Judy seconded it. Denise, how do you vote? Yes. Courtney, how do you vote? Yes. Sherry, are you with us now? Yes. <laughs> Great. I don't know why my camera's not working. First, I couldn't get the sound to work, but yes. Okay. Are you voting yes on the motion? Yes. Excellent. Judy? Yes. And I, Diana West, vote yes. Motion carries. Okay. Thanks, Diana. <clears throat> You're welcome. Thank you. So I've been in touch with Linda at Fossil Graphics, and I asked for a new quote, and she gave me one, and it is just shy of $10,000. So that does not include installation, so we will need to see if a kind volunteer is still up for installing them. He did join us tonight. That would be Dan. Um, <laughs> but there was, I had a question for Linda about the quote because first she sent me a quote that was just for the sides, be, the sign being one sided. And the shipping was only like $800. And then when I said, oh, we actually want to do them double sided, this is what we're planning on doing. She sent me a new quote and the shipping more than doubled. And so I was just like really surprised by that because I was like, would the second graphic really add that much weight 
that the shipping would need to increase that much. And so I asked her about that, but she got confused by my question. So I'm going to ask her again. She thought I was referring to the quote she had sent back in September, not the one she had only sent me about a week previous to the new one. <clears throat> so I will follow up on that with her. And then I was like, we could just go get them. But I looked up where Deer Park, New York is. And it's on Long <laughs> Island. It's a bit of a hike. <laughs> well, maybe they can't like print on the back. Like they need a whole new panel. Well, when I look at the invoice or the quote, I should say, like it doesn't make that specific. Like it just tells me it's going to cost a little bit more per um, the panel. Like I think like it tells me that we're now getting eight graphics instead of four, but it doesn't tell me I'm getting eight signs instead of four. So I might have to call Linda and have a conversation on the phone to better explain my confusion. Because there definitely is some communication breakdown there. <clears throat> so, um, okay, my other thing about that is we don't have the Spanish translations yet. Adriana had offered, but I mean, I haven't heard from Adriana in months. So uh, I'm going to send out an email if I don't hear back. And within a couple of days that I will give her a call and see if she thinks she can do that. Ask her what her timeline would be. Um, ask if that is a donation as a member of the commission. And I'll also just connect with her about her role in the commission in general. Um, but if she's not able to do it, then we do have $600 in our fiscal year 24 budget that goes into effect July 1st. So I think we will probably want to use that funding to try to get those translations. Um, unless anybody here knows of somebody who may be able to donate their time for that, but I don't want to make that assumption about anybody. Excuse me. Okay. Um, then once we have all the designs finalized, I think the next step would be to apply for the permit for the town because we want to make sure we've got them approved through the um, building commissioner's office before I think we pay for fabrication because it would be pretty terrible if we got the signs here and then we couldn't put them up anywhere. <laughs> so, um, put I them think... in a barn somewhere for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that that'll probably hopefully be this summer and then installation possibly be in the fall or next spring. Dan, I see that you are with us. You had once offered to volunteer to install the signs. Does that offer still stand? Yeah, I can do that. It's not a big deal. Um, I, I do that kind of stuff all the time. So um, just let me know when and where, and I'd be happy to meet anybody anywhere to, to take, get, take care of it, get it done. All right. Thank you so very much. Yep. All right. Oh, and back to the quote. I got the new one on May 13th, and it's good for 90 days. So hopefully we can get things really moving once the new fiscal year is over. Can we see that again when you got the quote? May 13th. Okay. All right, any questions about the signs? We, If you were at town meeting, we did have one gentleman who questioned the location of the one in North Hadley. Um, I thought he was joining us tonight, but um, he did not. I don't actually know his name, which is kind of my problem. Um, so I wasn't able to invite him personally. I just told him that the agenda would be posted with a Zoom link. Um, so we might be hearing from him about a location change. I guess there's concerns about when the um, when Lake Warner is busy, like there's a lot of people parking in that area and people parking with like big trailers that could have boats or like canoes or kayaks on them or something. So it might be in the way. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe there's a lot of town owned land in that section of North Hadley or really anywhere else in North Hadley, especially since they sold the village hall. So I think we'll just have to keep that conversation open. Hopefully we can find a compromise. Um, I mean, ultimately the, the location was approved by the DPW director but I want to make sure we're being friendly and neighborly and yep. working with other people in town. Okay, any sign questions, comments, thoughts? 
All right. West Street walking tour. Courtney, where are we with this? So I feel like I need to stop talking to people because I keep getting more <laughs> stories. <laughs> um, and I um, went to town hall recently and I looked through the historical commission stuff and found a little bit more information. Um, so I plan on putting that in and then I think I'm just going to stop um, and then ask folks to read through it. Um, I'm happy to have a deadline for that. Like I could say, I don't know, two weeks from now, you'd be ready for <clears throat> review. First draft. Okay. Sorry, what is, what is this project? Which project is this? The walking tour. Oh, the walking tour. Great. I mean, down the road, we could look into doing something else with the other information you have gathered somehow. Yeah. Bring that online somewhere, like a low cost option. Um, I think right now, yeah, we do need to focus in and not make it too unwieldy and just try to wrap that up. But I'm not like pressuring you to be done. Like we gave ourselves two years to um, get the funding from CPA. So we've got some time. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think if I just have that deadline, then I'll, then I'll get it done. So. I totally get that. <laughs> All right. Any other <laughs> questions or thoughts about the West street walking tour? Okay, the driving tour. So as you know, a couple months ago, I had reached out to Stacy about doing it and she said she would. Um, and then I asked her for a timeline and I never heard back. So I'm going to give Stacy one more opportunity to take this on and I'll let her know that Alex at Hadley Media did offer to do the recordings if she was not available. And I think Courtney also had an offer from someone at NEPM. So we have yep. options. Um, but I would like to get the ball rolling on that since the draft has been sitting for quite some time ready to go. So I will reach out to Stacey again. And then get, if that doesn't, if that falls through, then I will reach out to Alex and see what his timeline could be. And um, if he thinks that we're getting people to come and record it or like if he would do any of the narration or anything along those lines. Um, and we have to figure out where we're going to host it. If I remember correctly, I think we learned that we could put it on SoundCloud for free if it was under five hours. Does that sound right to other people? I can't remember. All right, I, remember I will. <laughs> I can double check that. But it's definitely under five hours. Great. Yeah, I don't remember if it was SoundCloud or something else, okay. but that would be in the minutes. Okay, I'll look. I also wonder, like, does that mean that people might get interrupted with ads? Like, how does SoundCloud work in that way? And, like, can you, like, download the full thing and, like, just onto your phone and listen to it? Or do you have to, like, have internet access? Um, so I will look into those things. All right. Any more thoughts, questions, comments on the driving for? Okay, so um, the other main thing I had in the agenda was to talk about Russell School. As we know, the town meeting passed the feasibility study. And what I heard when I went to the forum was that um, the select board was planning on moving quickly with that once the new fiscal year turned over. Um, Courtney is making a beautiful smile. So um, uh, I'm just hoping that that proves to be true. But I'm quit. wondering, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm wondering, like, if people know more, what the next steps might be, how we can continue to be supportive of the project. So, um, I've spoken with Carolyn Brennan about this, um, trying to figure out if there's any way that we can prep anything in advance of July 1st. Um, and we also asked to be involved in, um, putting together the, um, uh, what's it called? Um, the, oh RFP gosh, I'm gonna say selection. RFP, thank you. The RFP um, 
and um, I was told no. Um, <laughs> and they said they can't move forward on anything until July 1st, even if it's prepping for things. Um, so it's a little frustrating. Um, they said that there are also three other projects in, uh, ahead of the Russell School. Uh, so they need to work on those too. So one is the town hall columns, one is Goodwin, um, one is something at the senior center. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, and then we're on the docket. So uh, the RFP needs to be posted for at least two weeks and then they need 30 days for procurement. Um, which brings us to August 15th, which is the CPA deadline. So um, we're thinking we probably won't be able to get anything on fall town meeting if we're asking for CPA funds. Um, we've looked into, we've talked about other options um, to see if we can get on fall town meeting through um, like a petition or something. Um, but I don't know if the select board would be um, happy about that. So, Dan. Yeah, I'm, I, they've thrown their monkey wrench in to the point where right down to the wire, like you said, our, it's right down to the deadline. So if we want to get anything in by petition, uh, we have to get all those numbers together ourselves and we don't have a budget for that. And they know it. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a very sad state of affairs when um, the select board is not responding to what the majority of the people would, would rather see. And, um, you know, I'm, again, super disappointed. I'll, I'll do everything I can um, to, to, you know, keep the process going, but, um, you know, all we can do is rally the troops. You know, the, the, the thing is that, People want results on this and judging by uh, the votes at town meeting, um, you know, people want some kind of reaction and it's hard to tell what they want. Um, you know, everybody who was really paying attention noted uh, who was voting for and who was voting against it, but it's hard to even tell, you know, who you know, what their motives are when they're voting for this particular uh, agenda item. Um, it's important. It's a huge, huge important thing for this town and, and, and uh, surrounding towns are, are watching and, um, you know, our, our select board, it seems, you know, like cutting the, um, you know, not recording and not covering uh, a lot of meetings by public access anymore. It seems like the, they, they'd rather not have people involved. Um, it's kind of depressing and, <laughs> and upsetting, but I, you know, I've, I've not changed my mind on the issue. I know a lot of people have, and I, the, those are the kinds of people that I, you know, I question what their motives are. Um, I guess know, good luck to us. At this point, we have to see if the town follows through on doing the feasibility study. And I am of the opinion to give them until the spring, because as we've just reviewed, the timeline for fall is just too tight. Yeah. Even without having all these other projects in line. So I'm, I'm going to give them that grace. And then I think um, come winter time, as we head towards springtown meeting, we, we should regroup and think about a new strategy. Um, unfortunately, I think us on the historical commission do have to play a little bit of politics here and we have to make sure that we are within the select board's good graces. But if there were other concerned citizens who might not be serving on town commissions that could come forward with a petition that we could say we support, but that we don't necessarily put forth ourselves to make sure that we are we are playing that long game. I, I think the select board knows our opinion on it. I mean, we wouldn't be doing our job if we said to tear it down. Um, but it, I think we're being, um, we're, I think the select board might be waiting to do what, the, what they did with the other buildings 
and they don't want to spend the money, but mm-hmm. they also don't want to lose that, that chunk of land. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's a, it's a huge valuable chunk of land and any, any developer um, would, would, you know, would jump in on it and they would get a killer deal just like uh, Joe and Rick got in North Hadley. Um, it's, it's, it's shameful um, to, to, to waste that property and sell out to, to, you know, private interests when the, you know, the greater majority of people could benefit from this, you know, incredibly in the future. Um, it's really short-sighted and, um, you know, I, I, I hate to, I hate to fight city hall, but, you know, I didn't, I'm not making this divide. They are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, we, we just have to do all that we can and, um, sure. uh, like, I mean, we did the survey, but I think it, it's going to come down more to like, they need the people in front of them saying, yeah. This is what we well, want. that's the thing is we gave it between the, between the survey, you know, I, I, I think if, if that, uh, uh, original article for 1.236 were to make it to town meeting, I think there would have been a lot more people at that town meeting because yes. mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who have, you know, they know what this is about and, yeah. you know, um, you know, the, <laughs> When it comes to big dollar issues in this town, the public shows up and that's all there is to it. You know, I was at yeah. the town so, meeting. They said they were going to um, put in the, the, the new article for the feasibility study. And at that town meet, at that select board meeting, rather, they said they were going to keep that article on the warrant for the money for fixing it and right that and they the, the discussion then was they were going to have the feasibility art, article first the money article second and then with the idea that they would table the second article because the first article had passed so there was hijinks going on after that meeting because then they got after that meeting they got to the CPA got the CPA to vote to withdraw the, the funding so not yeah, a and all those, you know, yeah. all of those uh, committees showed up and, you know, I, I, you know, it's. It's unfortunate. It's the writing's on the wall. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's sad. It's, town's in a, in a tough spot right now. And all we want to do is help. And we don't, we do, I do not want to, you know, misspend millions of dollars of, of our taxpayers' money. That's not what I'm about. I want to do this right. And, and I'm, you know, so it takes a little extra work and Mm -hmm. it takes time. I knew it took time when I, you know, when I signed on all these years ago to, to help. Um, And the rest of the school committee, you've you've done a lot of great work. And there's a a ton of work that's got got done is there's a ton of work that still needs to be done. And, you know, the town's going to want to go and they're going to ask, for money for their DPW building. And that's going to be a big ask. And, you know, I really hope they really sharpen that pencil. Um, it's a, it's an important project and the guys who work down there work hard and, and, uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about, you know, this traffic's been terrible in town lately, but they're doing all they can to keep it together. And they're doing, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they're doing a great job. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the Russell School Committee is it still exists, right? They haven't disbanded you yet. No, but I, you know, I, I, I can almost see the hatchet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, good to know. Um, and then, so for for clarification, Dan mentioned about uh, the recordings of um, uh, meetings. Um, so we got an email from Alex uh, today or yesterday um, saying that they're going to stop recording. Uh, meetings for non-elected committees, uh, which includes us. Um, so, okay. Um, I mean, when we met in person, this wasn't a requirement. Yeah. Um, right. I thought it was because of once they added the Zoom aspect of it to kind of fulfill that open meeting law 
requirement why this was. Um, I mean, I'm fine either way. It does provide good clarification for people if they would like it. Um, it has meant that we've ended up in a couple of Gazette articles that are a little bit of a surprise, but I think those <laughs> are more helpful than harmful at the end of the day. So um, I hadn't heard from Alex about that. So when I sent him um, I think it's because... I I think it's because this is uh, via Zoom only, so they can just take um, the recorded Zoom and and put it up. Oh, it's a lot yeah. easier. Because Alex usually, there. yeah, usually comes to our meetings and sets the, the camera up and everything and then picks it up at the end of the, the night. That makes sense. I would say as long as they're not, they're not banning uh, uh, us from recording on Zoom, it makes sense to, to continue. You guys are doing a great job on, you know, just doing Zoom meetings and you know, I think all committees should do that just for the, the backup, but, you know, we'll see how it ends up. I'm sure a lot of these committees um, don't care one way or the other, but it's extremely helpful to uh, the public as well as the committees to have these meetings recorded. Mm -hmm. Except for that, the one issue that Courtney ran into is when the select board decided to, to mute her so she couldn't comment during select board time. And, and that was... I was there when that happened too. I went. Wow. I went in person. I went in person, but Courtney Courtney came in virtually, and they shut yeah. her off. Yeah, uh, and which was terribly disrespect, disrespectful and unprofessional. And there's so many things about that 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 were, you know, that I could, you know, not, you know. I was not able to attend you know, the um, the webinar that was about an issue similar to that, but. A Apparently at the at the open meeting webinar that Courtney and I went to a couple of weeks ago, we learned that um, at every meeting, they don't have to allow any kind of public comment. Like you can attend, That's correct. but they don't have to allow it. So um, unfortunately, it was within their right to do that. Although, of course, incredibly rude and disrespectful at the time, at, at any time. But the law is on their side. side in regards to that um especially if it wasn't an open comment period um so yeah, something and, and to beyond be aware that, of. what i took the takeaway that i got was that only the chair has the right to speak and the chair right. can tell tell the whole committee as well as any public people to just shut up. I mean, you just, you, you're the chair is the only person who has the right to speak during the meeting, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, I, I understand archaic. that, but that doesn't <laughs> yeah. really make a really? meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Like if I, like why even have a, a committee? Like I, I would just do all of it, right? <laughs> but that's not how we run things, luckily. So um, I guess as of right now for Russell School, we just need to sit tight and see what happens. And um, hopefully the town will do what they said. It, from what I understood at the forum, it seems like Molly Keegan is interested in this issue and is hoping to move it forward. So she could possibly be a good ally on the select board. Um, well, she was I will tell when you. She was on. She used to come to our meetings a lot. I will tell you that um, she is in favor of uh, divesting of the property. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, she, um, she's, she's happy to save the building, but she would rather it be in private hands and get the, okay. get the, the, the financial part of it off the town's hands mm. um, and the fixing up. Cause it's going to cost, you know, uh, Mike Sarzinski was, was correct with his numbers and it's going to cost anywhere between six and 12 million easy to get the place ready for any kind of use. And that's the lowest kind of use. Um, anything above that would cost even more. So mm -hmm. be prepared to spend in excess of 10 million to, to, to bring the building to use. So, um, you know, that being said, <laughs> um, you know, this is not a, a thing, you know, something that the CPA can do all on its own. Um, it would raise taxes eventually. This is a long-term decision. It's for the townspeople, not for just the five people on select board. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, course. but, you know, it, it, that, it's a lot of money for town to think of. And it's going to cost about the same probably for, for a DPW building. It's going to cost 
nearly $30 million to do it right. Um, and the, you know, all we need to do is stabilize this building to, so that it lasts 10 to 15 years so that we can actually use it in the future sometime. But it's a long-term plan. It's not, you know, we can't think about putting uh, a million and a half to $2 million, $3 million in it and it's going to be ready for use. You're going to spend at, at least you know, $10 million to bring it into, to full use. Um, and it would, it's, it would be a beautiful structure, but you, you, you can't expect it to go as quickly as the senior center or the library did. No, cause um, those are new construction. That's new okay. construction is completely different. So, um, I think we're rehashing old problems. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Where we live. So, I mean, right now we don't really have an action action items, but if you guys have any idea of how we can be helpful, please let us know. Um, I think right now it's just a waiting game to see how the select board moves forward. And um, I think it's just, if they don't, we need to hold them accountable for what the town yeah. voted on and what they did promise to do because they did make promises at the forum and at town meeting that this would move forward. Yeah, Dan and I have talked about how we'll uh, continue to be the squeaky wheel um, at upcoming meetings, uh, just to make sure that things move forward. And I know we've gone down this road before and hit some roadblocks, but, um, I mean, it comes down to money at the end of the day, I think. And so if miraculously there are some grants out there that can help with anything, we can just find them and present them. But I know that's a big challenge. Yeah. All right. So under any, excuse me, under any other new business, all I really had was, I think we should keep focusing on our three big projects that we've got the CPA funding for. And um, then once we've got those in a really good, close to complete place, then we can think about some of the other things that were brought up, such as doing something to honor Mary Webster, um, a fairy pole was mentioned by Dr. Zagrodnik. I've done no research on that, but it apparently exists near the river on the common. And before the pandemic, we were talking about digitizing our records. Um, hopefully we can get on that once we feel good about our other three projects, because we have gotten some requests recently that I wasn't really able to fulfill because I, I really don't even know what's in our records or what they're organized or what they're like. And access to them, I think, is only limited to when the town hall is open. So those are fairly limited hours. So I think I, we were using some program in conjunction with either Hatfield or Northampton and Jennifer James Newmore. Uh, fairy pole stuff. I um, found information on that that I can send along. Cool. Old Fairy Landing. So it's on the south side, not on the north side. Oh, okay. Mm. Or at least it was in mm -hmm. the in 1986. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, the one other thing I did want to bring up was right now all of the Google Drive stuff lives in my personal Google Drive. So I think I'm going to try to migrate everything into the at the historical com Google's Drive because I'm running out of space. <laughs> and that's where it should live anyways. Like when the day comes that I move on from the historical commission, everybody can still have access to all those files. All right. Anybody else have anything we need to talk about? I just had a question when you said you were trying to access files for to be able to digitize them. Are you talking about historical commission files specifically? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, wanted to be clear. We had an information session with Jennifer. It was like two months before the pandemic. It was like right before, and then everything happened. And yeah, and she was having we issues with it working yeah. too when we met with her. But. So typically we wouldn't meet again until July, but do we think we need to have a meeting next month maybe just to keep us on track for getting our CPA stuff moving forward. 
That's fine. Going to meet meet in June and skip July. <laughs> okay, I'd be down with that do idea. That. Take the so, summer off. June would be June twentieth. 